let me start with the presentation. So here it is. Um, this shows an initiative from the United Nations. Um, it's called the Global Compact for Sustainable Development. You see uh, 17 fields or areas um, where the United Nations want to improve the situation for the world in general. Of course, one of the most important points you see here, number one, no poverty, no, number two, no, zero hunger, and so on. Uh, we are part of this initiative, and when you look in, in detail, of course, you can extract out of this global approach uh, some very specific uh, trends, and, and they are working fields for our machine building industry. One of the points is uh, digitalization and, and assistance systems, um, so making machines more efficient, making machines more simple from from um, um, user point of view, you can say, um, in the similar way, also the point with demography, change of demography, we, we, uh, we get an um, older generation, we get less um, skilled people. So also here, machines must be more easy, must be more safe, economic, or um, yeah, more simple to use. Um, and this is something what we want to show you next week in our tech um, talk, so more looking to assistance systems. Uh, then there's a big point, um, also deglobalization and, and decoupling. And I think that's clear what we see the last months. Um, uh, a real problem our supply chain in general. Uh, fortunately, with Harvey, we have a very good and very um, deep added value. So we were not in this big trouble and we are still very good uh, in um, um, uh, delivery um, um, quality and, and time. Also here you will see in the next next uh, tech talk uh, inside in our production. And then last but not least, the decarbonization and CO2 footprint. Um, that's, I think, clear what it means. And this is uh, the topic for, for now, for the next uh, hour. Why should we look more in this topic, uh, um, um, uh, zero emission or uh, CO2 footprint? This picture shows it very, very simple. Uh, this is a global temperature change from 1850 to 2021. Um, there's an average um, done from 71 to 2000 and temperature which are equal to this average temperature in this time frame is white, blue is colder, red is warmer. This is worldwide perspective and you see it's very simple that we have in the last 10, 20 years a clear a warming of, of the uh, world. And I think discussion is over about that it is like this and also that we have some some impact due to this. But the big question, of course, is, is it a risk or a chance for us, uh, for our industry? And I would say it's a big chance. Um, this picture here from Goldman Sachs shows the investments in, in green energy and in infrastructure measurements until uh, 2030 and this is our 16 billion US dollar. Main portion of course renewable energy and, and power grids but also loading infrastructure for e-cars will be built more and more um, and also topic here H2 fuel cells also important point for our industry to, to look how can we deal with big um, demand of power. Is it with battery-driven machines or with H2 fuel cells, we will see. But a lot of investments and more a chance than a risk. What is Harvey doing? Uh, since years we are in the area of renewable energy with uh, solar, wind and water power. Here two examples. This um, cylinder power pack combination here unit uh, controls the mirrors of such power plants. Yeah. And the power packs like like this here controls uh, wind turbines, braking, pitch control, and so on. So this is not a new field for us. Um, a relatively new field, of course, is electrification of mobile machines, not only for you, also for us. We have products with batteries, with motor pump units, and also with surveillance controllers. And this is something we want to show you 
in the next minutes. And last but not least, um, also the organization is doing things to reduce the CO2 footprint. We have our own sustainability uh, measures like zero waste, for example. And we have also results. It's not only paperwork, it's real results behind. We have reduced our CO2 footprint since 2011, uh, uh, 48% less, say like this. So this is good result. But now we want to focus on electrification of mobile machines. So Michael, please take over. Yeah, thank you very much for this introduction showing the trends. Um, we will go right away to our colleagues from Harvey Macho, um, Hannes uh, Rumpolz, who is responsible for sales, and uh, Mario Gebhardt will show us more details about uh, the electric electrification parts in general. Hannes. Thank you for the kind transition here, Michael. So before I start, I want to uh, use a few words to myself. My name is Hannes and I'm responsible for sales here at Abel Matro. Um, to start, I want to tell you some facts about the company. So as a uh, part of Harvard, we are based in Schwarz in Austria here next to Innsbruck. Um, with our new building, we have now or now able to produce our solutions on a total floor about 3000 square meters where we have about 30 employees on our side at the moment. So next to our vehicles, so for example, the Rovo or our engineering department, we also have our own battery development, which you see here in this picture, and also, of course, the battery production. Um, you get an idea. Um, these are projects, electrification projects we have carried out so far. So, for example, um, yeah, here we see an electrified front loader or some next to it, a fully electric tractor. What is also here, we see an fully electrical excavator. And yeah, also next to these projects, our vehicle projects for uh, like the Rovo, um, we can see here we are from the fire and rescue systems till to the agricultural technologies. So our products are represented. So before we go now more in detail, I want to show you an overview of our services, the range of services where we accompany you here from our concept to the serious production. So before we go in detail, we mostly um, create a comprehensive concept. So we call it like a pre-engineering, which includes the component and system consulting. Afterwards, um, we go into the detailed engineering, battery engineering, and then, so it is on the customer requirements, we are also able to set up and do the commissioning for your um, working machine or your electrification project. And as I already mentioned, the target here is the transition to the serious production. So now, how could a uh, portfolio, a product portfolio from Harvey Matto look like um, for such a project? Um, at first, we have our standard batteries um, with the capacity range of about 4 to 12 kilowatts. And maybe more interesting is um, due our own battery development, we are also able to produce and develop customized batteries from the range starting with about four kilowatts. Um, we also have an own high voltage voltage distribution called uh, BDU, um, but I think my colleague will tell about this later in detail. 
Also always, or the most time in the scope of our supply are motors and inverters, um, the correct and right charging systems we hear about till five kilowatt per hour, um, interfaces and controller, and last but not least, of course, the core competence of Harvard the hydraulics. So these all components combined result in a solid and yeah, sustainable solution solution for your electrification project. So um, a small overview of this project could look the following. We have here, for example, standard or customized batteries, which are yeah, combined here in a BDU. The most time also mm, components like DC DC converters, or here's an example, and 12 volt batteries, also part of it, where we um, do the integration in the whole system. Quite important as, and then, yeah, um, thing is the charging concept. So here, this is always designed and perfectly matched to the whole system because just just not then we can guarantee their high operation times or the right operation times and also the high amount of the um, charging cycles of the batteries. All these components then are perfectly matched and designed to the hydraulics or yeah, the ele electric drives. So this was a general overview um, from my side. Now my colleague Mari will go more in detail. Thank you. Thanks, Hannes, for the introduction uh, of our components and the overview of our services. So maybe before we start with uh, some examples, a few words to myself. Um, my name is Mario Gebhardt and I'm responsible for the engineering department at Have Matro, where we do all the engineering stuff around the electrification of such projects. So as we can see here, it's, uh, it's a schematic of such a system. We, in the next two slides, we will see also uh, examples. And if we take a closer look at this schematic, we see on the right side um, two electrical engines which directly drive the drive train, the drive wheels in this in this example. And down there, we will see an electrical motor with an inverter which drives an hydraulic pump for the hydraulic system. So we will take a little bit later a closer look where it makes more sense to drive a hydraulic system with an electrical motor or where you have more um, advantage, advantages if you use directly the electrical motor. So if you have to connect these consumers with your battery system, you have to use uh, something like a power distribution unit, where we'll, which we will see also in the in the second part. And the system also needs a charging system. And in the on the top side, you can see a DC DC uh, converter for the low voltage consumer, something like the control unit, and also some some lights for for the mobile working machine. So in this example, we can see a small electrification or a small part which was electrified. So we use our scalable battery system in this example with 48 volts. And you can equip this unit with two to four battery packs. So in this way, you have a battery capacity from 16 to 32 kilowatt hours. And with this unit, you can electrical drive the hydraulic pump, which is shown on this side. And then the whole lifting process can be operated with this battery pack. We also installed some converters to generate a 400 volt AC grid connection that the customer is able 
to um, use this supply voltage also on his body of, of the of the truck. In this example, we have a bigger application of electrification. So we used eight to twelve battery packs with a voltage of uh, with a nominal voltage of hundred volts, connected also with our PDU and drives on this side an electrical motor combined with a Harvey V60 pump. And the perfect interaction between electrical motor and hydraulic pump generates the maximum efficiency. And in this way, you only have to use the necessary uh, amount of batteries, which are really is necessary. So if you... Um, Take uh, if you would uh, choose the wrong motor, maybe a, a bigger one, and are not able to to do the perfect interaction between hydraulic pump and electrical motor. Um, you also have to use more batteries for the same runtime. But in this example, um, the perfect interaction generates the maximum efficiency. On this, yeah, and. If we have heard a lot of our components and also about our services, so we are able to supply one battery and also with the necessary accessoires like the charging and the PDU, but we are also able to electrify the ho a whole vehicle. And we can also deliver all between these to uh, minimum and, and, and this maximum. So we can also deliver a subsystem as we have seen for the smaller hydraulic system. So our customers has to tell uh, the, the application and also their requirements and we can combine our services and our components to fit a perfect um, service for our customers. And as we have seen the loading crane, we are able to develop and uh, produce this whole package um, as we've seen in, in this picture with a different interfaces on the electrical and also on the hydraulic side, which, is, uh, which will be built up in our workshop and also tested. And so the uh, customer can easily integrate it in his vehicle. So thanks for your attention and back to Michael. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Hannes and um, Mario for this introduction of Matro and the scope um, of portfolio, uh, which you can uh, provide. Uh, just a short question, Hannes, to you. Um, Matro used to be a small entity with 30 employees, 32 employees. Uh, now you belong to a major company like Harvey. Is it a threat or a challenge or advantage? Thank you for the question. Yeah, of course, an advantage because so, for example, I think that's exactly the combination we need. So what I mean is the combination of smart hydraulics and electrics will be, in my opinion, um, important or even major uh, facts for our sustainable future. And another point, what I have already mentioned, um, we are now able with RV to offer a very extensive consultation for our customers. And also due to the internationality, we are able to operate very comprehensively and yeah, worldwide. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for the statement. Um, I didn't expect uh, expect any other answer. <laughs> so, but um, let's continue um, with uh, some more detailed views uh, within the portfolio, co some components. Um, Lucas, Stephen. Tala uh, would explain us or will explain us uh, what's going on there. Lucas. Yeah. Thank you for the introduction, Michael. So I'm just sharing my screen now. Okay. So um, 
My name, as already mentioned, is Lukas Diefenthaler, and I am an. It's not enough for, from one battery. We can also use it in a in an array of batteries. And since uh, using a few batteries in parallel always comes with some problems, we have also developed this uh, additional part, which we call the power distribution unit, which handles the paralleling. But before I go into detail here, let me just describe our in-house developed battery. So firstly, um, we started the development of our new battery just slightly uh, over one year ago. And now it is already in a series production. So um, we can see here that it is built up from single modules. So we are very flexible uh, with, so with the size of the batteries. And since we do the whole development in our house, it is also um, <clears throat> easy for us to do very detailed test, tests on what our batteries can handle. So we really know down to the last detail what our batteries can support and what they can't. Um, so um, even though it is an, an entirely new battery, it is still backwards compatible. So this means that all um, vehicles sold can still use the new battery and we try to keep it that way so that if you buy products from, from our company, you will still uh, be able to upgrade to newer, to newer parts. Mm, since we developed everything in our house and uh, we can really, we are not dependent on some companies delivering us entire uh, parts. So this leads to a very good control of the supply chain. Since if something is not available, we can really choose directly a different, for example, a supplier of uh, lithium battery cells. And we don't have to buy the whole modules from, from one supplier. So this is especially important in these times where the supply chains are really messed up. Um, now let me just show you a few of the um, key techniques used in this battery. So most importantly, we use the wire bonding technique to connect the cells to the pack. And um, this wire bonding technique is uh, known for many years, but it was only used in uh, microchip production. And the company Tesla was the first to upscale this whole wire bonding process and use it to connect uh, lithium ion cells uh, to, to a whole pack. Um, we are using the same technology for a few different reasons. And I mean, the, the most important reason is that this is the safest method of contacting cells. So our battery is really, uh, is really super safe since each of these wires that we can see here acts as a single cell fuse. So if we have a problem with one single cell, this fuse will just blow and the whole battery will be protected from this one cell. Apart from that, there is a few more, um, for more benefits. For example, that the minus terminal of the cell is still free and we can cool it very, very efficiently. And the vibrational stability of these wires is way better than if you have a, a sheet metal lace spot welded directly onto the cells. Uh, the next um, big part of our battery is that we use a smart, very modern battery management system that takes into account most of the factors that are critical for the battery, for example, over temperature and over voltage protection. So this means that for a customer, it's really easy to use this battery since the customer himself does not need to take into account all these factors. This whole battery comes in a package with a very, very high energy density. And to, uh, so, and to, to explain what, an energy so what energy density really means, just imagine that you're electrifying a vehicle and you don't have that much space. So for a given space for the battery, the higher the energy density of the battery, the longer the runtime of your whole system will be. And to make this point, 
a little bit more obvious. We have a comparison of different um, batteries that are available or announced in, in the market in Europe and the United States. And we can see here, so now let me just point out that at this point that all of these batteries, they are very, very well batteries and they have all their uh, places where, where they can be used very well. But in terms of energy density, which is here, this number, which is watt hours per liter, so energy per volume, um, we, are, we are still with our new battery pack way ahead of um, the, the competition's battery packs. Even, we are even a little bit better than uh, the battery of the Tesla Model X long range that should be available next year. Um, now let me just show you, we don't have only this one battery, but we have a whole variety. <laughs> and so we are focused on uh, 50 volt and 100 volt systems, and we can build them with different uh, casing length and a whole variety of connectors. Um, so these are our off-the-shelf solutions. If uh, a customer needs something different, we can also build batteries with different casings, but then there is some need of some development. Um, if not only one battery needs to be used, but multiple, we have also off-the-shelf solutions for par paralleling them, as I mentioned before. And in this, uh, in this scheme, that was shown before, we can see clearly how this works. So we have here our array of batteries and we have a lot of components, like for example, the load here, which is a DC-DC converter that um, feeds the board net. Uh, we have a charger that should charge all the batteries at once. And we have, of course, the rest of the vehicle with a separate control unit with the motor and hydraulics. And now for the vehicle, it is very complicated to communicate with all these parts at once. So there is this PDU coming in because it doesn't only connect the high voltage uh, connections, but it also handles the communication with all of these parts. So in this, this means that for the vehicle part and for the control unit, it looks like if there was only one battery connected and for the vehicle control unit, you only need to talk to this PDU as if it was a single battery. And if it, how, it, how it looks in detail, I can show you in this slide. So this is this, um, this power distribution unit. And in here is the connection for the high voltage cabling. We have single fuses for the batteries and for all the loads. Uh, and we also have this single uh, control unit here that can handle the, the uh, communications. Uh, this always is packed in a, in a safe case. It has also an interlock line when the, when the lid is opened. And this whole case is waterproof and very robust, so integration in a vehicle should be very easy. Uh, it is also built in a way so that the electromagnetic co compatibility tests are passed very easily. And this is important because each new construction machine that should uh, be available on the market needs to pass these EMC tests, which is why we also use these metal wire connections that connect directly to a shield of the high voltage cabling. Um, with that, I am already finished with the uh, presentation of our product portfolio, and I want to thank you for the attention. In the next part, my colleague will present you how uh, how a machine using an array of batteries with a PDU is constructed and what you need to take into account in planning such a project. Thanks. Thanks, Lucas, for this information about our batteries, battery systems, and also components. So we have heard a lot of our components and also our services and took also a closer look at our solutions. But maybe one of you would think about it, okay, and how we can 
get to this perfect electrification, how we can find the perfect concept, um, how it is it, uh, how would the development process look like. So we will take a closer look at this um, this question. So we will start with a mobile working machine, uh, which uh, exists with a combustion engine. And at the first step, we have to take a closer look at all the information, at all the data of the vehicle. Something like the, the weight of the vehicle, the system power, the maximum speed, and also the fuel consumption. So these are the basic information uh, which we need to start with our concept, with our with the uh, to take a closer look at the mobile uh, or the working machine. So in the next step, we take a closer look at the combustion engine, not only the power, also the speed and the torque, which is necessary to drive the, the powertrain. The fuel consumption will get, um, will let us think about the rough idea about the battery size. So we can um, calculate in, in a rough way, but we can get the uh, idea of it. In the next step, we take a closer look at all the hydraulic components, which need uh, which components need the the most power, uh, where it makes uh, where it makes sense to electrify a hydraulic component, and where is also the, the the power of hydraulics necessary. And we don't only have to understand the components, we have to understand the whole system. We have to understand how it works and also in the next step, um, how the customer use this machine. Therefore, we collect or you collect data of this mobile working machine, can be some hydraulic information, something like the flow rate and the pressure, can be mechanical data, something like speed and torque, and as I mentioned, the application, how it is used from the end customer. Has the uh, machine only work in the morning for three hours or has the customer to use it during the whole day for 10 hours? So it really depends on the concept, how it is used. We can also combine a perfect um, charging system with a battery system so that we maybe can reduce the battery battery capacity capacity with a smart charging system so this information all information which we get from the real working machine um, are necessary to find the perfect concept and if you maybe think about the electrification of such a vehicle um, the first idea is maybe to replace the combustion engine with an electrical motor. We have to replace it with the same power and we can drive with this machine, can all do the, the, the working um, uh, parts which are necessary, also the working, uh, the work hydraulics will work. Um, that looks fine and yeah, it would be the cheapest way to only use one electrical motor. Maybe this is true until you take a closer look at the battery, the battery capacity, and also the cost of the battery. So if you only use one electrical motor with all the hydraulic system, um, you maybe need a lot bigger um, battery or more battery capacity as if you would electrify more components. So in this application also the tiller and the, the drivetrain was directly electrified so we used four electrical motors at the first uh, thought is maybe yeah but you have to pay also for this um, three additional electrical motors that's true but in this way we were able to design an efficient uh, drivetrain and it's on the cost side, it really makes sense to electrify the drivetrain, the tracks, directly with an electrical motor. So we were able to reduce the battery capacity and this cost of the battery, will, which was reduced, um, therefore we were able to 
um, also um, implement these electrical drives. So what I want to say at this part, so it's not that easy to find the perfect system and you also have to take a closer look at the hydraulic system and also on the electrification. But we have a lot of experience and we would really happy to help you with your electrification project. And also an interesting side fact in this application, um, the project um, was also realized in a, in a second and in a third step uh, that we optimized the hydraulic system. So in combination with an electric, uh, so to optimize the electrical system and the hydraulic system, we will be able to reduce the noise and also the standby consumption by up to 50%. And I think this is a really um, nice example of electrification. Thanks for your attention and back to Michael. Yeah, thank you very much, um, Lucas Mayo, for this uh, overview. Uh, we saw the details. Um, as we know it also from the hydraulics, we are very much involved in all the different aspects of components. However, we know what we are talking about, uh, looking for uh, complete vehicles and projects. Mario, just a short question. Where do you mm -hmm. see the biggest challenge uh, before you start a project with a customer? So the biggest challenge maybe is to get the information of all the information about the, the machine with the combustion engine and also define the, the, the use of this machine. So it's really important to understand how it will be used from the customer and also where are the, the charging times um, that we are able to uh, develop the perfect concept and the perfect uh, prototype for, for such a system. Thank you. So we okay. already see some um, questions here in the chat. Uh, just use it. We will summarize that and we will answer. Uh, we will find the answer at the end of this event. So um, now we saw the uh, electric part of the uh, electrification uh, electrified mobile machines let's have a look to the hydraulic part in the electric machines or the electrified machines um, because we still believe on hydraulics and we still believe on the strengths of the hydraulic marcus just go on okay oh then me again yeah Thanks, Michael. As you said, we have also some strengths in the hydraulic, uh, and it's important still to look into the hydraulic. Um, the world becomes e-powered, but not without hydraulic. Uh, but the, uh, one big chain, change uh, cha change is, of course, um, when we look before, we had a like here a truck application, and we have a diesel engine, and uh, the pump was directly connected to the diesel engine, but without diesel engine, we have a problem. Uh, you see here flange and, and uh, pattern is not fitting and so on, how to solve it. And of course, we made some some thoughts about it. This is a one, one picture, one possibility of a motor pump combination. It's directly attached together without any industrial um, couplings in between. It's a high voltage synchronous motor very compact, very powerful, uh, with ex, um, with, uh, with um, included inverter. We have solutions where the inverter is integrated in the motor, but like here, we have also external inverters, pumps with different controllers, you see later on, and a lot of electrification now how is needed to make the right layout. Why is it like this? Um, because before we had a diesel engine and this was had always enough power and uh, the hydraulic was a minor power function. Uh, now, when we want to build the right setup, of course, we have really to look to, to more in detail and to find the real need of the hydraulic application. 
because these electric motors, they have the possibility to over torque them by factor two in a short time. So we have really to dig into the application and check the, the errors to check the efficiency of the combination because the motor, the electric motor has a different efficiency curve and characteristic than diesel engines. And also here it's important to have a look into this area to find the right efficient version. Um, why do we talk always about permanent magnet synchronous motors? I think on this picture you see it very simple. Uh, of course, we can use industrial motors here on the left side. It's both three, uh, 30 kilowatt engines. But you see the size and you see the weight at uh, 260 kilo. And when we then look to the permanent magnet synchronous motor, it is factor two to three smaller and more than 85% more lightweight. Uh, it is from 260 kilo to 35 kilo. And when we talk about mobile machines, of course, you have, um, the, you have the problem with installation space, and of course, you have to transport it always. Uh, so weight is a very important issue. That's the reason why we focus on this type of motors, um, air-cooled or like here in the picture, water-cooled. But then, of course, we have to discuss the pumps. And there's also not one single solution Again, here it depends really on your needs. Starting with uh, constant pumps for 250 bar, we use here normally internal gear pumps. Again, due to efficiency, but also due to noise level. And uh, that's an important point. When we skip the diesel engine, noise becomes very important. And yeah, internal gear pumps are the best gear pumps from this perspective. Um, then when it comes to higher pressure needs, we have the uh, um, variable displacement pumps, the C40 for medium pressure needs and V60 for high pressure needs, both uh, variable displacement and also this has advantages uh, due to the um, uh, possibility to change the, the displacement. We can change the, the, the volume flow by changing the turning speed of the motor, that's right, but with uh, the displacement pump we can additionally change it and very fast change it and we can adapt the right efficiency of the electric motor and the efficiency of the pump in the combination. We, yeah, or here you see the uh, controllers um, for the both um, variable displacement pumps. We have a big set on, on different controllers, pressure, power, flow controllers. Um, I would always say let's start with electric pressure controllers. When we talk about a new system, we have to rethink it and the electric controllers have a lot of advantages. With electric pressure controller, you can very simply do an uh, electric LS on a flow sharing system. But nevertheless, uh, we can of course use our standard hydraulic load sense controllers. So if a customer say, no, I don't want to change everything in, in, in one step, of course, this is a very simple possibility to stay with a common hydraulic and only change the motor pump combination. But I think um, it's important to think a little bit um, more further. And this is an example for uh, V60 with a lot of sensors. We have here the electric uh, pressure controller and uh, together with our um, EV2S um, amplifier connector, this pump is CAN pump. Eh? Then you have a CAN um, capable pump. Uh, into, with the integrated pressure sensor, you are able to run a closed loop control of, of pressure. And with integrated swivel angle sensor, you can do it uh, over the swivel angle. That means the flow control. Additionally, you can in, we can input a, a temperature sensor and the leaking a leaking line uh, for making condition monitoring, and we have the control cards and the software depending of industrial or mobile application. And what you see here is real an absolutely perfect and 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 um, I, ideal um, power or, or flow um, supply or source. And all internal efficiency topics are solved with the closed loop controls. And what are the advantages of such electro hydraulic systems? Um, the first thing is uh, efficiency. When we use an electric um, LS controller, electric prop, uh, prop controller, pressure controller, we can adjust the needed standby pressure 
by the needed demand. When you when we have a standard hydraulic controller, you have to set it to the worst case. That means cold oil, high flows, very high delta P. And this is losses all over the time. With electrically control, you can adjust these to the needs. And um, that means, of course, less energy, uh, less energy losses. And also when we talk about stability, dampening solutions, very easy because it's software. Um, and as I said before, the combination of um, efficiency characteristic of the motor and efficiency characteristic of the pump, we can match it. And also here we can opti uh, optimize the um, overall efficiency of the unit. And then from functional point of view, um, we have uh, with our PSL CAN valve an absolutely perfect onboard electronic valve. Um, and we can solve very simple electronic flow sharing issues. So controlling the flow and the demand and match it all over the time. And also um, in a um, uh, hydraulic flow sharing is always reducing all functions in the same way. Here, when we do it electrically, we can make a prioritization. For example, function four and three is not changed, but two and one is perhaps not so important. We can reduce the flow. And this electronic flow sharing functionality is already integrated in our PSL. So the software and the logic is, is there. And when the rest is electronically controlled, it's no, no problem to do it. And the benefit is, of course, better functionality. Um, yeah, that's uh, the summary, the picture all over there yeah, from starting from the battery. You heard a lot of it uh, about it uh, now, motor pump combination. And then please don't forget the hydraulic. Uh, don't stop with electrification about motor and, and, and battery. It is has really to go over the hydraulic in, in, in total. Also to think with complete new approaches like decentral hydraulics. Don't forget the controllers and the software behind. We have it as a package. Ask us, and we can, yeah, we can together with you find the best uh, setup for your machine. Okay, then that's again from my side. Michael, you can take over the screen. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Markus. Also to you, the question: uh, What do you see from the hydraulic side uh, as the biggest challenge starting such a project? The biggest challenge is really to, to go in detail and to check uh, the real demand of the application. Uh, before, it was simple for us. We asked the customer, what is your needed pressure? What is your flow? And this is corner power, no problem for the hydraulic. Uh, but that's too high and uh, senseless for a machine when we electrify it. So really go out together with the customer, measure the real working cycle, looking for the rated power needs, for the peak power needs, and find the best setup. Thank you very much. So, we um, uh, talked about trends, uh, macro portfolio, we saw some insights about the batteries, and um, we uh, talked about solutions. Um, where can you read something about this also? We um, um, published some uh, or white paper. You find that our, at our ho uh, homepage. Just uh, search for white paper, and you find there are several uh, underneath that also the electrification of mobile working machines. Um, something you can keep in mind uh, with our sales network and service network worldwide, we are able to serve machines wherever you export probably the machine in. It's not only North America or South America or Middle Europe. Um, we can serve also uh, and service also machines in Australia, South Africa, wherever. Probably Russia is not a good idea yet. However, um, if you have further questions to these topics, um, either you can still use the chat 
um, or uh, just send us an email to techtalk at harvey.de and we will come up with an answer. Uh, right now we have um, uh, we have um, the summary. There we go. Um, we try to um, bring to you um, the ideas we have in mind uh, talking about electrification of mobile machines from concept to prototype and zero supply. Um, we saw the different aspects um, which are which is integrated. Um, it's not only the traction drive, it's also working function which need to uh, overlook. We um, probably you participate on our customer event in late last year where we um, showed the ideas of decentralized solutions. Um, we heard from uh, Mario already this aspect. Uh, it's not always good to have one major machine running then all the different uh, small functionalities. So we have to overlook all that in more details within a project. Um, this is the, the project based aspect. However, we also saw the components and of course the battery is one of the core component within this uh, aspect. Um, Lucas already um, uh, explained us some benefits of what we do in this um, task. So thank you very much for the presentations. Um, we got already some in, uh, some uh, questions here. Um, probably Mario, you are the right one to answer that. What is uh, what's about uh, ATEX and NEC approval for batteries and or PDUs, whatever? Mm -hmm. Thanks for the question. Um, our standard battery packets are not designed for this application or field of application. But if there is a need for it, we will take a closer look at it and maybe we can discuss it. And maybe there is some development necessary. So maybe if you need more than one battery in this application, um, yeah, we would be happy to um, talk it afterwards and find a customer solution for, for this application. Yeah. Good, thank you. IP rating, another question. Um, I mean, it's always uh, difficult to say because um, it's a different task if we are talking about uh, power box or if we are talking about individual battery packs and P individual PDUs. Mm -hmm. uh, are you agree? Yeah, that's that's exactly true. So if we're talking about the, on the, the components, we have clear for the battery IP65 and also for our PDU. So if this is um, sufficient for, for this application, yeah, you could definitely use this batteries, uh, battery system. But also maybe in this application, it really makes sense to take a closer look at the application and also maybe which services are necessary, which components are necessary, that we can take a closer look at the system, subsystem, or whatever is, is needed, yeah. So please feel free to contact us, uh, maybe also with this uh, email address, which Michael also mentioned, and we would be happy to help you with, with your application, yeah, or requirements. So thank you very much. Uh uh, Mario, Lucas, uh, Hannes, and Markus. Um, right now we are at the end of this event. Thank you for participating on that. Thanks for attention. We hope that we could uh, transport any new ideas, some hints how to approach a project. And we would be happy if we could go on with something um, just ask your Harvey contacts and we will coordinate that. Thank you very much and have a nice day here in Europe. A nice evening. Bye.